What's going on friends, Sam Prentice back once again. In this box we've got the Ender 3 V3. Of course we've been down this road before with unboxings, but will this one be any good? Let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master at work. The Creality Ender 3 V3, amidst the trio of recently released Ender 3 models, stands out as a potential apex in the lineup. In a lineup that includes the budget friendly SE and the clipper based KE, the V3 earns its name without any specific suffix but carries the promise of being the best Ender 3 to date. As we delve into this iteration, it becomes apparent that Creality has focused on refining and optimizing various aspects of the printer. From improved build quality to enhanced features, the Ender 3 V3 seems poised to offer an unparalleled 3D printing experience. As enthusiasts explore its capabilities, it becomes clear that this model embodies the evolution of the Ender 3 series, presenting a compelling option for both newcomers and seasoned users alike. This Ender 3, unlike any of its predecessors, is a Core XZ belted motion system. Some of you might be familiar with the very popular Core XY designs that you have seen recently on printers like Bamboo Labs P1P and X1 Carbon, along with the Creality flagship model, the K1 and the K1 Max. The design, the Ender 3 V3, is different again, as it has a co-belted Z axis and X axis, while the bed, the Y axis, moves independently. This configuration provides a more compact design and can be advantageous in terms of reducing the overall size of the printer. Core XZ design offers advantages such as reduced moving mass, increased print speeds and improved accuracy. But on the flip side, the complexity of this type of motion system has potential for synchronization issues, troubleshooting problems and limited market availability for machines built in this manner and this could be a steep learning curve for a new user. However, having spent some time with the Creality development team last year, it was really exciting to see how passionate the team is about this machine's potential. Overall though, it has to be said my visit left me a little confused on what direction Creality is really heading in with the Ender 3 line. Clipper machines for the majority, a little bit of Marlin Spice on the SE, a touch of linear rails on the KE, and let's throw in a K1 parted bed slinger with a rare motion system just because well, we will get to that, but today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. Discover the future of electronics with PCBWay.com, your go-to destination for cutting-edge PCB solutions. From precision circuit boards to seamless 3D printing, they redefine innovation. Unleash your ideas with their state-of-the-art technology and unrivaled quality. Why settle for less? Choose PCBWay.com, where excellence meets your imagination. Elevate your projects, elevate your success. PCBWay.com, the leading way in PCB and 3D printing excellence. During my V3 livestream, one person in the chat suggested that this could be great for non-planar 3D printing, a process covered in depth by Michael Laws over at Teaching Tech. However, the inherent issues lie in software and ensuring there's enough space for the nozzle and shroud for collision avoidance. Further community adoption could potentially lead the V3 down this path with a modified hot end perhaps in the future. Apologies folks, I don't know why I've gone Australian and posh, but make sure you check out Michael Laws over at Teaching Tech. Links of course will be in the description below. Let's, uh, let's get back to this. Let's move on to machine specs. As mentioned before, Creality has released three new Ender 3 machines. Each one has a uniqueness to it. The SE and V3 share the build volume of 220 by 220 by 250, where on the KE, the Z height is 240. Max printing speed, which should always be taken with a pinch of salt, ranges here. The SE 250 millimeters per second, the KE 500 millimeters per second, and the V3 600 millimeters per second. Again, slight variations in bed heating 100 up to 110, on the V3 and 260 degrees on the SE hot end, while we have 300 degrees on the V3 and the KE. The major change in these machines is the system being run. The SE, for example, is running Marlin, whereas the KE and V3 are running Creality's OS, which is based on Clipper. The other elements on the V3 are shared with the K1, the build size, max speed, hot end and shroud, screen and technologies such as AI when using a Creality camera. The enclosed path with the K1 might be better overall, especially when printing exotic materials that require venting and enclosed spaces. One more key difference is in the acceleration speed. The K1, for example, is 20,000 millimeters per second. The V3 is 10,000, KE 8,000 and SE 2,500. The higher the speed typically will result in a lower print time and again will be material specific. 
Next, I want to talk about the Core XE kinematics and look at if this has been done before. Firstly, Core XE kinematics enables rapid movement along both the X and Z axis, eliminating any limitations or problems associated with lead screws. Even a slight bend or desynchronization in a lead screw can result in undesirable patterns and artifacts on your prints. The Z hop speed is increased, but time saved for this system is most likely negligible. Z hop, of course, is there as to avoid knocking over prints. This really only needs to be a fraction higher than the previous layer. Searching online, the only other Core XZ printer that seems to be at a production level is the Switchwire from Voron. Modbot and Steve Builds have undertaken these builds and the feedback has been super positive, but it seems that Core XY printers are still the preferred because the Z speed is most certainly less important. As I spoke about on my V3 livestream, I found a couple of websites and videos of attempts to produce Core XZ prototypes, mostly in rep wrap form and at maker fairs. Over at corexe.com, there is a website outlining the principle of operation, references, and links, which unfortunately are mostly dead links now. There are a few people that have worked on this system as a project, one that I found had metal wire assisting in the movement process, where others went for the belted versions. Each of these appear to have great potential, but for the most part at that time, perhaps the software just wasn't developed enough to make a solid impact. So while we have eliminated troublesome lead screws in this particular design, I went back to Creality and asked them five questions of which some were answered. So the first question is, what makes Corex Z a preferable choice? They said, Making the Ender 3 line faster, more precise and more reliable. Adding to the lineup with improvements on the X and Z axis, again delivering on quality 3D printing. Second question, apart from the advantages on the lead screw and the acceleration speed, what additional benefits does this system offer? I didn't hear back on that one. Number three, what's the rationale behind naming it the Ender 3 V3 instead of the Ender 3 V3 XZ? Creality believes the successor of the Ender 3 series is released and follows the path for open source, the structure and software. Number four, can we consider this to be the ultimate version of the Ender 3, especially considering the previous releases like the SE and the KE? Creality has been committed to industry innovation, avoiding product homogenization and providing users with a better experience. We believe that Core XZ is an excellent variant of traditional gantry models in terms of structure, and we have been studying it for a long time. Now it is time to take the ancient gantry models to the next level. So my other question was very much around the marketing strategy around the Core XZ. Again, this seems to be the first production printer of its kind outside of the Voron Switchwire. Um, and well, I didn't really get an answer on that either, but it certainly seems like this is going to be the ultimate version of the end of three. Creality supplied me with a pre-configured profile for Orca Slicer. In general, the print speeds specified in the slicer have been quite accurate, except when dealing with models containing overhangs. During the print of the Kuva car model by Sawpix, I encountered a few challenges with the small Kuva driver's head. However, these issues were easily resolved once I identified that reducing the speed was necessary to achieve optimal print quality. I've spent a fair amount of time playing around with the settings in the slicer, along with configuring some of the clipper settings, such as the rotation settings, PID and pressure advance, which are just set to base level during production. So it's important these are at least recognized as things you should probably tune or at least consider to do so if you have any issues with print quality during use. Now on my firmware of the V3, I do appear to have an open sourced version so I can access Clipper by adding colon 4408 forward slash hash forward slash at the end of my IP address string. This is where you can tune your printer further, but I would suggest you steer clear of playing around with the settings unless you know what you're doing. The last thing you want is to brick your printer and render it useless. So far, I haven't played around too much with the settings or added anything in addition as of yet, but I expect I will look into this more once the the V3 has been put into mass production. So what about the prints and the quality? Well, I received this unit back in November, and since then I have received three new firmware updates. In that time, there have been stabilization improvements which have positively affected the print quality. For example, in the gray self-print, you can see a curious movement echo on the outer walls. Since this last update, the quality change has been noticeable. The dragon prints are stunning and printed in Creality Rainbow PLA, which gives the print the staggering color shifts between prints. The God of Wealth is a favorite of mine as large 
large scale versions of these with 99% infill were being printed at the Creality factory in Wuhan. Each weighed in around 15 kilograms. This one, however, has been printed with lightning infill and in comparison is very light. The speed on these prints is a calculated experiment. For example, there is a noticeable difference in quality when using their fast speed PLA, but also in the balance of elements like overhangs at speed. Again, overhang speed is adjustable in Orca Slicer, so getting to know your machine's limitations along with the slicer software will leave you in good stead with your 3D printing journey. And with these recent improvements, the overall experience has become even more impressive. Considering the continuous advancements through firmware updates, I am eager to see how this 3D printer evolves in the future. The journey of exploring and fine-tuning the settings in Orca Slicer has been rewarding, offering a deeper understanding of the machine's capabilities. As technology progresses, it's exciting to anticipate further enhancements and innovations that will undoubtedly shape the ever-evolving landscape of 3D printing. So what are my final thoughts on the Ender 3 V3 Core XZ K1 parted drop-down boxed bed slinger with Core XZ kinematics that haven't been really wildly tested outside of the Creality ecosystem? Well, it's an interesting one because the printer performs incredibly well and the experience actually has been pretty damn good i can't really say that there's actually any kind of major issues that haven't been fixed either by working inside of orca slicer or working with the firmware that's been provided to me again it is a smart technology 3d printer so by the time you've added a camera or you've added other elements to it it's online it's land based again you can use creality cloud to send your print files to it the connectability is very good and the designers behind it are absolutely fantastic people. So there is a, really isn't anything that you should not like. But then it comes down to the price. And the price that I've seen is actually, again, very, very reasonable for the amount of printer that you're getting. It's a printer that's easy to use, easy to build and configure, with a sterling past that remains under the Ender 3 brand name. And if you're thinking, well, it's just another Ender 3, well, it's not just that. It's a fresh approach to the traditional Creality offering. And let's be fair, are there too many Ender 3s? The answer is probably yes, but this is very much a breath of fresh air to the Ender 3 line. But of course, this is going to leave you with a Creality Dilemma. Which of course is, do you buy this or do you buy the K1? Or do you buy the recently announced K1C? Again, there's so many printers that are available out there in the marketplace right now. Let me know in the comments what your go-to printer is and if you're going to buy the Ender 3 V3. We'll see you next time. Thank you once again to Creality. Thank you once again to PCBWay and we will see you next time. You are watching a master at work. Michael Laws. Michael Laws. Things come out. His hand? This is it, yeah? Where's the arm? I've got little. Channel is sponsored by. Do have some steps here. Yeah, I'll get out of those pajamas right now. Last lot of pajamas for the day, that's good. See more on this type of content, click the video below to watch out how... <laughs> that was a shame. The problem we've got here is they don't have western sizes. So, oh, here we go. We, do, we might have a western size. Here we go. So I've got to put these pajamas on now. <laughs> Does he speak English, the other guy? No, they don't speak English. Okay. okay, okay. So the first part here, of course, is health and safety, and there's nothing more safe than putting on a pair of these little shoes. So pop those on first of all. Look at those, they're very fetching. So I'm at PCB Way at the SMC assembly line. It's pretty damn awesome. Give me some koala bear jokes. <laughs>